Many of you know I've been using my platform to uh, elevate voices of those who've been uh, victims of sex assault, sex crimes by people they know or people that they don't know. As you know, I'm somebody who's been a victim of sex assault, and I now am uh, wanting to broaden that conversation and talk directly to a person who's out here accused of raping over 15 women. Uh, his name is Kalon Walker. He's an actor and artist from Los Angeles. Many of you may know him from the movie Superfly, but a lot of you are coming to know him on social media as he just got released from uh, jail after serving three years and uh, in a public fight with Kalani and some of his victims. But now we're going to talk directly to him and see exactly what he says happened or didn't happen. All right, so welcome to the show, Kalon Walker. We're going to call you KR or Kalon. You can what call do, me Kalon KR Walker. My acting, my acting career, I'm known as Kalon KR Walker. And my artist name is KR. All right, so KR, um, I've met you before when around when Superfly came out. This was some time ago. You're from LA. You're an LA native and an actor, artist, right? Yes, I'm from LA and I have family in North Carolina, so I rep both sides. All right, so look, typically we do a lot of small talk, but I just want to get right into things. First, I want to say that I've been using my platform recently to elevate the voices of people who have claimed to be taken advantage of. I'm a, a, a survivor of, of sex abuse. I'm very open about that in my book and have interviewed recently Raz B, who was open about his past. So this is a little different for us to be talking to somebody who's in the middle of um, a pretty big scandal. But, you know, I've also been very clear that I think that the Me Too movement um, is very important. But also, I think sometimes without guardrails that people are found guilty in the court of public opinion before they have their day in court. Exactly. Um, you recently. Um, so first, before we get into all the stuff, because it's a lot. Let's first start by telling people who you are, a little bit about you, um, and your background. Okay, so um, born and raised in LA. My real name is Kaylin Rashad Walker. I got the name KR because I used to dance in a jerking group called Marvel Inc. back in the day. Um, started rapping after after the group, you know, split. We had different, you know, goals in life. I started making music, and I went by KR. Started doing music, put it on YouTube, just made a name for myself musically. And then I started to get into acting. My first role was a movie called Kings. It's currently on Netflix right now. And I did a movie with Halle Berry and Daniel Craig, Daniel Craig, who plays 007. Um, and I played Halle Berry's son. Then I did a BET show called In Contempt for BET. Then after that, I got the role of Superfly. And, you know, the story continues. Okay. And so um, when I met you, that was right around when Superfly came out. Um, I think I met you at the time with my former co-host. We mm -hmm. were out and about. I can't remember all the details. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, I didn't know or wasn't aware that there were allegations being made. Were these allegations happening during the filming of Superfly? No. So I find it very strange and ironic, but I, I've seen this happen in the business before. So I'm not really surprised. Um, when I made Superfly, I didn't really post on social media about what I was doing. I'm a very low key dude. Like when I'm making moves, I like to make moves in silence. After it was announced I was on Superfly, then these random allegations start coming out of nowhere. Once I made a little, I think when people are at home and you're seeing somebody that you've been around before, you don't like, or you secretly feel a way about that you don't want them to succeed or you didn't think they would succeed. When you see them doing something or accomplishing something, it makes you feel away, whether it's bitter, envious, jealous, and that can cause people to do very, very, and say very, very harsh things. That's why I find the timing very tricky and strange that as soon as I'm in a major feature film and I have a lead role, now all of a sudden all these allegations came out. I want to remind you, Jason, I have no criminal history. Wait, but before we before we get too deep into it, let me go back. So when you were filming Superfly, because yeah. right now what people know on social media, for those that are just catching up, mm -hmm. there were several allegations made. Um, I think 15 different women allegedly have said mm -hmm. that you raped them or sexually assaulted them. Mm -hmm. w was this happening or did you hear about any of these allegations prior to the taping of Superfly? No. Okay. And so while you were filming Superfly, did, were you aware that there were women who felt this way about you? No. Okay. And so just so you're clear, you know, when people watch this show and Hollywood Unlocked, they know what I do. Mm -hmm. People are going to be watching this show, especially if they feel like you've taken advantage of them and they're going to come out and say, no, this is the day that happened. This is when I said something, you know, receipts are not that hard to find. So you're, you're saying there's no receipts of anybody that's made a complaint before the tape of Superfly? No receipts. From what I've Thank seen, you. no receipts. Now online, people can say whatever they want online. There's a, there's, there's strangers saying they've been next to me. People can say whatever they want, but I personally haven't seen any receipts of any type of allegations of anything until my movie came out. 
Okay. So in 2018 mm -hmm. was when you were arrested and you spent three years in jail, which I didn't know where you had disappeared to. I didn't know that you went to jail. You went to jail on exactly what? So after my movie came out, I can't, of course, like I said, I can't discuss the details of my case, but I can give you the outline. Long story short, I was set up. A person, I can't say this person's name, but long story short, after the movie came out, somebody was not faithful to their spouse. They weren't faithful. But instead of telling their, their spouse, hey, I cheated, they didn't want to do that. So instead, they made up these false allegations about me and said I did something to them that I didn't do. Then the spouse said, okay, if this really happened, then tell your mom. The person's mom is a cop. This, this, specific, this specific person told the mom, the mom put me in jail, blasted me to the news, and paid other people to make false allegations and police reports on me to keep me in jail longer. But how did you know? How did you know that the mother paid other people? Because I don't think people realize people talk. So when I'm getting screenshots of girls talking to other girls, there's a lot of people that support me. I, I'm aware of all the hate. I get it. I understand. That's fine. But there's a lot of people who rock with me too. So when these girls are saying things about me that are false, and they're saying it to other girls who these girls don't think they know me. These girls send me screenshots. This guy, hey, this girl told me to say this to try to put you in jail. I just want to let you know, I'm seeing these things physically. So I know for a fact how I was set up, why I was set up, and when I was set up. And that's how I ended up in jail initially in the first place, off a specific person, not being faithful to their spouse, saying that I did something to them that I didn't do because they didn't want to admit they were wrong in their relationship. That's how I got it. So, so the woman that said that you raped her, that told her mother, you slept with her, correct? No. It's on the record, oral. I received oral sex. And like I said, I can't discuss the details of my case. Once the case goes to trial, everything will be revealed. But what I will say is this person's actions of doing something wrong and lying placed me in jail. Okay, but some people may not understand that. They may say that you're just using my platform to victim shame and that you're just here to attack them and 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 say whatever because it's just like they're out saying what they're saying without evidence. You're here can't speak about evidence. So what people the public doesn't know the truth. And first of all, that's understandable. I can understand that. I'm not here to victim shame. Let me make it very clear. I am not convicted. I think when people saw me be released from jail, they thought I was convicted. I am not convicted. My case is still pending and the truth will come out during trial. I can't speak on the detail, but, I, but I'm letting you know that I am an innocent man and you will see the innocence shown once the trial happens. But I have the right to have due process. Yeah, but of course, but this is in a courtroom, right? This is the public. This is the court of public opinion. So it's like they say their thing. You're here saying your thing. But all of you really, I mean, aren't giving details. And I think one of the things that makes it pretty difficult for people like me who sit in the middle is we don't know what's happening, right? And I don't want to I want to make sure that I'm not publicly aiding and abetting in something that may have happened to these people, not when I'm out here standing up for victims of sex abuse. And so when I say to you that that there are women who are saying that you or when when you come on the show and you say that there was a particular woman that went to her mother that said that you raped her. My question mm -hmm. to you is, did you guys have sex? If you guys had some type of interaction, some type of sexual interaction, because nobody in the public is going to believe that a campaign just came out of the air on you to try to get 15 women to send you to jail. Does that, I mean, because it really doesn't make sense, at least to the normal person, right? But I'm not in your yeah. shoes. And that's yeah. why I'm trying to ask you for more details. A hundred percent. I understand that. But like I said, my case is a very sensitive subject and I have to, to address it. I, I have no problem doing another interview with you guys after this whole process is done, but I cannot speak on the details until my situation is taken care of. So for right now, everybody has the right to have their opinion, but the truth will be revealed when trial happens. Well, let me ask you then, if we can't get into the details, why offer up the suggestion that there was a woman's mother who's a cop who conspired to pay people to take you down? I mean, because that's I a major detail. That's I, I get that. But that's not the details of my that's not the details of my case analytically when it comes to paperwork. I wanted to bring the awareness and give the outline to that so people can understand that in this business, this th these things happen when you become 
look, and uh, let me make it clear. I'm not no mega celebrity. I'm not huge. I'm, I come from humble beginnings. I'm aware that I'm not the biggest artist in the world, but I was making progress. And whether you're male or female, this is a global thing. When you start to make progress, if people feel a way about you making progress, they can make up allegations like these. I've seen these allegations ruin all men of all races when people make false allegations. For the real victims that really been through this, I understand and I empathize with that. But if you're using the movement to weaponize and to lie and put innocent people in jail, that's not cool. And somebody has to explain that. Because this topic, Me Too, and falsely accusing men and women are two very sensitive topics, but they need to be addressed. Real victims. Right, but, is but, they, but, right, but that's a conversation that's ongoing at Hollywood Unlocked. That's not why I booked you for this show, right? Why I wanted to talk about was specifically your cases, the allegations that are made against you, yes. give you an opportunity to clear the air on what you're hap- what, what's happening with you. You know, using this show to talk about, you know, the, the concerted efforts of people who are conspiring against men, we mm. know that that is something that happens, right? But some would argue and say 15 different women with the same story, right? Would there would there would be some commonality there that that there's a missing piece of the puzzle of what's driving all these people to say something about you? But it sounds like you can't really get into the particulars. Let me show you something really quick. Uh, this is when I saw it. Kehlani had posted this online. She okay. posted something that said, you know, uh, the topic was sex assault. And she said, I apologize in advance of everything I'm going to be retweeting it involves rape and assault. I am standing with the victims of a serial rapist who I knew personally to be aggressive, dangerous and twisted. He was released on bail and is back shooting. She went on to say yesterday he got about five girls to make videos standing up for him, gaslighting his victims, defending his innocence and claiming if he was guilty why has he been released from jail after three years? He made bonds supported by celebrity friends and gaslit followers shaking my head. Now, I was somewhere torn because, you know, I've met you before. I don't know you personally like that. And I do know Kaylani somewhat, but I didn't know. Again, I'm in the middle, not knowing what happened. You then okay. posted something on your Instagram. You posted this. You said, um, it's real quiet now, huh, Kalani? You've been putting down black men on your platform for years. Party Next Door, Kyrie Irving, Tory Lanez, YG, me, and the list continues. Uh-huh. Everybody in the business knows how shady you are. And so I don't know your relationship with Kalani. I did see something where it said you all had been intimate. I did want to ask you, what is why is Kalani having such a reaction to your case? And why is she so public in her detest with you? Okay. Right now, before I even get into the details, I want to tell Kehlani personally, as somebody who was in a relationship with you and somebody who was in love with you and you felt the same way about me, I'm very disappointed that you even take it this far versus just calling me on the phone. So before I explain this story, Kehlani, I want to let you know, if you're down to have a conversation, we can still talk after this, but you inserted yourself in a situation that had nothing to do with you. So right now, I'm not attacking you, love, but I'm just defending myself. Kehlani has a very... In the business, people know how she moves. But of course, her 12 million fans that never met her before, they would assume that she's this person she's pretending to be that she's not. So if she's going to try to blast me or air me out with false allegations, she should give all the details. She shared things that she felt about me, but didn't share our history. So let me take you way back. Me and Kehlani used to be in a relationship about 2014, 2015. She, around the time she was with Nick Cannon, I think she just signed her deal. She was homeless living. She was homeless scrolling, like strolling through Hollywood. Me and my mother took her in and she lived with me and my mother for six months. While she lived with me and my mother for six months, we, we fell in love holding each other at night, talking, conversating, I love you. At that time, she, I was ghostwriting her songs for her label. Her label didn't know. She didn't want me to tell her label. Nobody knew, nobody knew anything about it, but I was ghostwriting her music. And we were also in a relationship. As she was getting, if you want to go back to timestamps, we were dating around the time she dropped a song called Loyal. She had a song. It was a great song, by the way. Very, very talented girl. The song's called Loyal. When she's getting bigger... I finally asked her the question. I say, hey, why, what are we? I know that's kind of cliche for, you know, me to ask her, but what are we? She says, I'm in love with you and I want to be with you, but my career is getting too big and I don't want to put that I'm dating you because I don't want girls to try to take you away from me. 
Kehlani's very insecure. I'm insecure. It's two insecure people trying to understand each other. At this time- By, by this time, you guys were sexually involved. Yes. Yes, okay. we were in a relationship. We were in a relationship. We were dating without the word girlfriend, boyfriend, and it wasn't public. As she's getting bigger, I hit her with the, what are we? She tells me, I don't want other girls to take you from me. So I don't want to put you out there that, that I'm in love with you and I have feelings for you. So what happens? As a man, I'm, I'm not scared to say it. My heart gets broke. I'm sad. I'm vulnerable. I feel a way that I just spent so much time with this woman. She's saying she loves me. She wants to be with me forever. She wants to do all these things when we have a family with me. And when you start getting famous, you expect me, you, you just, you want to keep me a secret. I'm not a secret. I'm a, I'm a man too. I have value. I have worth. I don't, do, I don't feel like I deserve to be a secret. So after that, she left. She went to a studio session. Her friend was with her. I can't speak on the friend's name, but her friend was with her. When, when Kehlani left to the studio, her friend saw me crying and, pulled, and started rubbing my back and said, hey, I know this sounds very, very awkward and very weird to say, but I really think you're attractive and I've always been attracted to you. When Kehlani left, she didn't say this in front of Kehlani. When Kehlani left, but she said, I don't know how to, I don't know how to tell you because you were with Kehlani and talking to Kehlani and I didn't want to come in between that, but I always thought you were handsome. Long story short, Kehlani comes back from the studio and walks in on me and the girl being intimate. Kehlani starts crying. She leaves what to the hall. What is intimate? Kissing, hugging, sexually, having sex. Sexually. Having consensual yeah. sex. This girl that Kehlani is still friends with today, who she thinks is her friend and got her back, she went behind Kehlani's back just say her name. Me. What's her name? Who? Y'all, I'm sure y'all find out. I'm not going to speak. We on don't listen. Life. The public doesn't know. We don't give a shit if you and Kaylani want to fight each other, but we want the details. This is where we get into it. You can't say how the allegations started. Who is gotcha. the friend? It, well, who's the friend? Okay. I'm Jane Doe. I'll say, I'll say, the, I'll say the person. I'll say the okay. person. And it, and it hurts me because she's saying these things, these negative things that took place that weren't true. She flirted with me when Kehlani left to the studio. It went behind Kehlani's back, told me I was attractive. We ended up being intimate. Kehlani, walks, Kehlani walked in on us in the room being intimate. You got to imagine how Kehlani felt and how I felt. First of all, you just pretty much said you love me, but you don't want to claim me. So I moved on. I was hurt, but I moved on. But and isn't Kehlani Jane Doe, Jane Doe's one of the girls now making claims against you? Is this the yes. one that Kehlani is now supporting yes. publicly? Yes. Yes. Mm. And, and if you see on the page from the DMs of her saying, you did this to my friend and blah, 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 that's a lie. That is a lie. And so the she, friend she's speaking of is the girl Jane Doe, who's yes. making allegations that she walked in and saw you in bed with that was having consensual sex behind her back. Yeah, yeah but, but pay attention. Kehlani didn't mention, she's saying, you did this, this, this to my friend. She didn't admit, she didn't mention that her friend was sleeping with me consensually and that she walked in start Kehlani started crying crying ran to the hallway crying crying in tears how could you do this to me I go meet her in the hallway I'm like first of all you hurt me you told me that you're in love with me you want to have a family with me and want to be in a relationship with me but then you go then you tell me you don't you don't want to claim me to the public like I'm a secret so I moved on and then you come back after I moved on and see me with your friend then get mad at me and act like I did something wrong when your friend went behind your back. They're still friends to this day, and it hurts me because I known Kaylani longer than, than she knows her. And I'm telling her right now and publicly, she lied to you, and you're still friends with her. Mm -hmm. She's manipulating her. I'm not. Once she was in the hallway, we argued. We went back and forth, back and forth, argued. We didn't speak for about two weeks. Kaylani calls me. I want to see you. I go see. I go see her. We have makeup sex. You know, the angry makeup sex. The, I hate you. Why did you do this to me? I don't want to claim you, but I want to be with you. I'm in love with you. We have makeup sex. After we have makeup sex, another two weeks pass. We don't speak at all. Now she's blowing up my phone. I'm not answering because I'm still hurt of how she played me and how she made me feel like I'm in secret when I stuck by her when she had nothing. She was were homeless. You still, were you still in touch with Jane Doe at the time or was it just the sex no, the one time the, and that was it? No, no, the Jane Doe thing. Once, when when Jane Doe, when when me and Jane Doe were intimate, and Kaylani walked in on us, Jane Doe played like she, like like she didn't like she don't know what's going on. 
that's what makes me so mad because I would have never been intimate with Jane if she didn't come and rub my back and want to make a move on me. And she made a move on me as soon as Kehlani went to the studio. I can't make this up. I, I, I cannot forget the no, details. No, but I'm saying, I'm saying, did the relationship with you and Jane continue after the one oh, time no. you had sex or was that no. it? No, after Kehlani, after Kehlani walked to the hallway and started crying, Jane Doe looked at me. She said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know I messed. I ruined you guys. I'm so sorry. And I said, don't worry about it. And I walked out. We never spoke again after that. Never mm. spoke again. So like I said, two weeks passed. Kehlani calls me. Can you come see me? I go see her. We have sex. Makeup sex. Angry sex. Going at it. Just being, you know, makeups. You know how makeup sex goes. Two weeks passed. She's blowing up my phone. I'm not answering her because I'm mad about how she played me. Then a month passed. She hits me and says, I'm sorry. She hits me and says she's pregnant. Kaylani told you that she was pregnant by you? Yes. And I was, I believe her because we were the only ones that were intimate at that time. And were we you guys have, were you guys using protection? We used protection in some cases, but then a lot of cases we didn't, if I'm being okay. honest with you. Okay. So she tells me she's pregnant. Now, when she tells me she's pregnant, me as a man and wanting to be a father one day, still to this day, I want to be a father. I want to have like four kids, five kids. When she said that, everything, all the disagreements we had, all the heartbreak, all the 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 love, the struggle, the, the miscommunication went out the window for me. And mm -hmm. I went straight to her. I said, if you're pregnant and I'm the father, I'm going to be there. And we're going to have this child. And I'm going to be, she said, I don't know what to do if I want to keep it or get rid of the child. I said, yo, I'll make it very clear. You have the right to do with your body as you please. It's This child is growing inside of you. Me as a man, I cannot even fathom how that feels to have a whole human being growing inside of you. I can't understand. But what I can do is empathize and let you know you're not alone. But I'm, I'm, gonna I'm, be I'm confused though. I'm confused. Hold on. I thought Kehlani had a baby by her friend. And if she knew she had the baby by her friend, did she not know that this, she was having... I'm confused. This this was prior to her having her first child. This is prior. Okay. Before. okay. So this was not the child that we know now. No, 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 no. This was years prior. Years prior. Okay. So then what happened with that pregnancy? Okay. This is, this is, this is why my, sorry. This is why my heart is broke by how kaylani has been acting towards me. So when she told me she was pregnant, I said, no matter what you decide, I'm letting you know. If you are pregnant, I want to be there for you. I am going to be a good father and I'm going to be supportive and I'm going to be there and have your back. I would never allow a child, a child to come in this world and not know who their father is. I would never allow it. So let's go to the doctor and find out. We go to, look, look this up. We go to Planned Parenthood on Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard. If you look at the DMs that you guys, the screenshots and the DMs you guys had, I posted a DM of her talking shit at me the day, the, like two, three days after I got a, uh, that I got released, it says on there about her situation with her homegirl that it took place on Hollywood and Orange. We went to Plan Holly. We went to Planned Parenthood on Hollywood Boulevard because we were staying in that area. We went. We went there. You know, it's it's law. You you should, you obviously know this. When there's a situation involving a pregnancy with a man, woman, whatever, male, male, female, whatever, both parties have the right to know the information when it comes to um, the doctor. I asked her, I said, let me go in the room and find out if this is true or not. She didn't want me to go in the room. I said, why don't you want me to go in the room to find out if we're having a child? She's like, it's, it's, just, it's difficult for me to explain. Just I'll go by myself. I say, okay, that's no problem. She goes in the room at Planned Parenthood. I'm waiting, I'm waiting in the little lounge. She comes in and she comes in and says, oh, my bad. Um, I'm not pregnant. Now, I'm already pissed. One, why? You just told me you were pregnant. I said, are you sure? You said, I'm absolutely sure. You said you were throwing up. You said you were sick. You said you didn't feel good. All this stuff. So I'm ready to prepare to be a father. I'm, I was young at that time, but I was preparing myself to be a father because I was going to be there for our child if this was true. She tells me it wasn't true. Then I said, Kehlani, don't talk to me no more. I left. She started blowing up my phone again a month later, not answering her. We go to a party, a Hollywood party in Malibu, we go to a party and we see each other there. Everybody in the business knows that that's personally connected to her, that's really close to her, knows our relationship, but the masses don't know our, what our relationship was and her label didn't know 
what our relationship was because she was trying to keep it a secret because she knows if this ever okay, got but this story the story is getting a little big people are gonna lose you i'm losing you okay so you guys went to a party what happened at the party okay at the party her team at the time said you and her need to talk about this and fix it because right now everybody in the industry is gossiping about you and kaylani what's stuff going on between y'all and it could get messy if it's not if it's not taken care of between you two so me and her end up having a private discussion in the bathroom and she tells me oh by the way i know i told you i i know i told you i was pregnant then i told you that i that it i wasn't pregnant but i actually was pregnant and i got an abortion after that me and her fell out why i feel like if i'm involved in getting you pregnant you could at least had enough decency to let me know the decision you were going to make with our child, if what you're saying is truthful. After she pretty much just said, I'm pregnant. Okay, I want to be there. Then, oh, I wasn't pregnant. And then a month later, oh, I'm pregnant. I was I was pregnant and I got an abortion. That took me over the top. That, that would hurt anybody. Man, woman, anybody. First of all, you have the right to do with your body as you please as a woman. I couldn't dare even understand the process a woman goes through when it comes to childbirth. But at least I feel as a, as a, just, I at least have that right. If I was included in the situation that you may be pregnant, then my opinion matters too. So if you wanted to do that with a child, allegedly that you saying that was ours, you could at least talk to me about it. And she didn't talk to me about it. She made a decision herself if that really happened. And then I was like, yo, don't talk to me no more after that. When she told me that, she tried to get me to go back to her house that night to talk, but I already know what that's going to lead to. So I never went ever since then. Our relationship has been rocky ever since now. When she put these allegations out, when I got released about me in front of 12 million people, I want to make it very clear. I'm not trying to attack her or bash her. That's not my intent, but I do have the right to defend myself. When I was released, I wasn't thinking about what she was doing. I was trying to get back on my feet. Spend time with my lady, spend time with my family. She inserted herself into my business. I want, I want to make it very clear. Kaylani never said she was a victim of sexual assault by me, but she's speaking on a situation that has nothing to do with her. So I responded on a record called Something to Say. It's on all streaming platforms, and I addressed our situation. But ever since then, our relationship has just been tricky, man. I'm, I'm, I'm hurt that she said those things about me, but after I dropped that record, if you guys pay attention... She has not said a word about me since. Why? Because she knows the truth. If she knew, okay, if, if well, I, let, let me let me ask a question because this interview is less about Kaylani. I know I wanted to get your response to what she had been saying about you in the press, but there was this video that popped up from Sydney Stanford. Take a look and then let's talk about it. Crazy. Yeah, in the back of your car in your parking garage. You remember when Yo. you raped me? Because you for okay. sure did. Plus twenty other girls. This man is a rapist, guys. I'm not playing around. Okay, he's a rapist. So I hope that you're getting joy and having fun playing these games with everybody's brain and I these girls' brains. But I hope you know you're going to get what's coming to you. And we're taking you to court. We have people calling yeah. in. You're going back to jail. Good luck. So what's your response to Sydney? So my response is, I want to make it very clear that there's random people that I've never met before making allegations, doing this in my DMs, death threats, everything. I think after this situation was triggered, everybody feels like they can say that I did something to them, whether I met them or not, and make false claims on my name. So that was just another example of the random people that said things about me that I've never met. So you've but never, so you've never met Sydney ever. Can't talk about that until my case is done. I cannot just speak on it. I mean, so what, what can you, or can you not talk about when it comes to these victims? Cause we're not going to 15 different people, but 15 different people. I know you said that they've created this campaign to smear you. I know you said that this is spawned out of a relationship that went sour, whose mother was vindictive allegedly. Um, and then, and then now Kaylani is just a disgruntled ex, which it sounds like who, you know, may have allegedly aborted your child and there may be some toxicity in your relationship from your perspective. So what is it that can you speak to specifically to the allegations of the people that have come forward? Anything? I do. I do. Mm, if I'm being transparent, I can't until the trial is done. It all makes sense later. I know Jay, I know you're doing your job and you have a platform to, to get your, the audience to be aware of everything that's going on. But you also know in the case of law, 
people when people have a pending case or a trial or a situation that's continuing, we cannot speak on it. But what I can speak on, I can address a certain situation that I saw you guys post about when I first got out. Um, the ASAP Rocky situation. But, but I, I remember you posted on Hollywood Unlocked and you tagged all the blogs and all the media companies. I'm ready to do my interview. I'm ready to do my interview. And now here I'm, we yes, are in the interview and we can't talk about nothing. So what is it that you were willing, wanting to talk about then? I wanted to come on here because I don't, one thing I don't, I don't run away from things. I just been through hell for three years, sitting in jail as an innocent man and being bullied and bashed by so many random people that I never knew a day in my life. And the last thing I wanted it wanted to happen was me get out of jail and it looks like I'm hiding or running. So I did want to come on your platform to say, I am innocent, but I will give you all the details you want to need. But I just want you guys to be patient with me and wait till after trial. Just my life is at stake. Nobody else's life is at stake but mine. But in all fairness, your life is at stake, but you got out and you dropped a song in response to Kehlani supporting these people yes. making allegations. And so yes. to, to the to the lay person that's just sitting back watching the show, they may think yeah. you guys are propagating whatever it is that's going on with the victims, with you, with Kehlani, like somewhere in the middle, the audience is just being torn between this show on social media and, and somewhere in the middle of it all is the truth. And that's what I'm just trying to get at. Oh yeah. I want you to know the truth too. And you will know the truth once trial happens. Um, I can understand how anybody coming, you know, hearing about the situation for the first time can be very confused. It's a very confusing situation. If you don't know me or Kehlani personally, or our relationship prior to these things that came up, you wouldn't understand. But I'm telling you, everything will come to light in time. But there's something I do want to address that you spoke about um, regarding, um, there's been rumors that some mega celebrity bailed me out and that ASAP, I saw ASAP Rocky respond. He said, quote, I don't know that clown. I didn't bail out shit. If you look back to my post and look at specifically what I said, I said, ASAP Rocky saved my life. I said nothing about a bail. The people took with that, what was said about that and ran with it. It's very personal information, but I do want to share it with you because I just told you I want to be a transparent person. He saved my life because a few years ago, I was jumped by Playboy Cardi and his guys for defending a, wo a specific woman that they didn't like. So Playboy Cardi pushed me in the bathroom along with his dudes and stumped my head in the toilet, stumped my head on the side of the toilet, ripped my ear open. I was... They were stumping my head in. It was like five or six of his homies stumping my head in the bathroom for me defending a woman that they didn't like. When they were stumping my head in, Asa Rocky was there. He pushed between everybody and picked me up and he carried me to a chair to make sure I was okay. I, could, I remember his words. He said, Shorty, you good? I'm so sorry. Shorty, you good? And I've seen him cuss out Playboy Cardi and everybody. Why the fuck y'all keep doing this shit? That's not cool. Asa Rocky did save my life. That's how he saved my life. I don't want to lie and, and put and not put a name. Playboy Cardi and his, and his and his niggas jumped me, stumped my head in the toilet. I'm bleeding, ripped my ear open. Kick, I'm talking, kicking my head in the kicking my head in there, kicking my head in the toilet, trying to kill me because I was defending a woman that they didn't like at that time. Mm -hmm. And ASAP Rocky stopped them and checked on me and dra and dragged me to the chair because I was unconscious. And I remember him checking me and see if I'm okay. I remember that. I can never forget that. That's so, how he so, saved So my what do you think life. about ASAP Rocky's response to, what do you think about his response? Oh, I understand that. First of all, let me make it very clear. I wasn't famous at that time. So if you're if you're in this business and you're a well-known person, you probably met 30,000 people. He didn't probably know who, he didn't know who I was at that time. I know he didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. So him see, but I'm, I'm sure whether he addresses it or not, he knows what night I'm talking about and he knows where it took place and when it took place. But if, if he didn't know my name prior to, I wouldn't expect him to remember. But why, but why, did, sure. why did Playboy Cardi decide to jump you? I mean, if he didn't know you, why did he, why, what was the thing that led up to Playboy Cardi and his friends jumping you? I was supporting, I don't want to get too many details. I was supporting. K KR, a KR, listen, if I hear you say yeah. one more time that you don't want to share too many details, what the fuck are we talking about then? Like, we're literally just uh -huh. or like finger painting hoping that it comes into some type of picture like what are we that's, talking about that's i could have said nothing right but, but you're but you're here to say something nobody comes on my show to say nothing that would be me talking to myself i can understand i can understand and i wanted to share but wait a minute you. you getting into a playboy cardi has nothing to do unless it does with your current court case and your pending charges does it i understand that 
but you guys posted this? No, but I'm, my question is, I'm not asking what we post. I know what we post. I run the company. I'm asking you, is what you and Playboy Cardi got into it with in the got into it about in the bathroom? Is it directly connected to any of the charges? No. Okay. Then why then why can't we talk about it? <sighs> okay. No, I'm, that, that's a question. Song. Why can't we talk about it? Let's talk about it then. Back to the song. I address two two people in the song, Something to Say. You can hear it for yourself. I was defending a woman in the, in the record, this first woman I'm speaking on, I was defending her and they didn't like that woman at that time. So they got offended. Like you, pretty long story short words, you defending this chick, fuck you, push me in the bathroom okay. and started stuffing and so my the, head So in. the girl that you were defending, the woman that you were defending, she was a celebrity or she, she was somebody that they didn't like? Yeah, she was a, she was a She's a, she's a celebrity in her own unique way. And she was affiliated, dating, talking to Cardi and his peoples and his team. I don't know what their relations were, but they there was some type of relation. Okay. I I didn't uh, I didn't like how she was being treated, so I stood up and said something on her behalf. She doesn't know this, but I know this cuz I was there. Maybe that was a mistake for me, but I did what was true to my heart. I confronted somebody in front of six, seven other dudes with his click, and I was by myself. Got it. When he, when he didn't agree with what I said and got mad that I was defending a woman that he, you know, defending someone he did not like or did not mess with at the time, him and his boys pushed me in the bathroom and started stumping my head in, in the toilet, mm -hmm. and ASAP Rocky stopped it. Okay. And it, that's what I was talking about in the record on something to say. So that's let, how so, so Rocky let, let, let me let me ask you about something else. So one thing I remember vividly about me when I met you, and this was a while ago. I remember we talked about your relationship with Halle Berry. And I remember you told me at the time that you allegedly had a photo of her giving you head. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that. So you hooked up with Halle Berry, though, right? First of all, let me make something very clear. I did a movie with her called Kings on Netflix. This woman has been nothing but generous to me. She gave me my first movie opportunity. She shared things about the business, what to look out for. She has been nothing but a respectful, loving person to me. I'm aware of the things that were said in the blogs, but I'm aware that if anybody see anybody with anybody, they're going to make things up. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about a direct conversation that you and I had. I'm not talking about I what the blog said. I don't recall that conversation. I don't recall that conversation. So you, but, you don't. But what I, but what, you, but what I, what I do. Know, but but so what you I, don't recall the conversation that we had about a relation that you had allegedly with Halle Berry. I recall you asking me about am I in a relationship with her because of things you saw in the media, but the other details I don't recall that stuff. But what I do know is I have nothing but respect and love for that woman because when she gave me my first opportunity to be in this acting and movie business and gave me advice on how to move and what to look out for and to look out for rumors and gossip and to be aware and prepare for all these things stuff maybe be put in your mouth of what's true and what's false but i have nothing but respect for that i woman. mean She's you can have respect for people that you have relations with i mean this isn't something that i would make up i mean i remember the conversation vividly i mean if you don't want to share your whatever alleged relationship you said you have with her we don't have to but no she no we did a movie together she killed the role. Amazing relationship. She's a great person. Okay. So there will never be something that comes out later that you and Halle Berry had relations or any anything confirmed. If, if, if the, the media going to say what they want to say, but I know how she treated me personally as a person and she was nothing but respectful and professional with me. Okay. So as it relates now to all these allegations that you find yourself in with these different women, and I know you kind of said what you thought the conspiracy theory was here on the show. Where do you see this all going, right? Because at some point you do have an opportunity to go to a court of law, not a court of public opinion, have your case yeah. heard behind, be in front of a jury to have yeah. evidence presented against you. Do you think there's mm -hmm. going to be evidence from any of these 15 women that say that have said that you allegedly raped them? Uh, do, you, do you feel like they're going to have any evidence against you? I'm innocent, Jason. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm so I want to pay I want you to pay attention and bring something else up regarding my case. I want to make it clear my bail when I first got to jail, I said this I already said this on my page, but I want to just read first for people that's unaware. My bail was a million dollars when I first got to jail. Right before I was released, it was four million dollars. These allegations on my name are very serious. How if if I'm not I some people is going to feel a way about this. I get it. 
if I'm not innocent, if people, if that's what people are saying that I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. That's what everybody's saying before I even have a chance to show my, show my innocence in court. How did my bail drop from $4 million to 400,000? Then I bailed out. Why would somebody in the court of law with someone with the allegations that I have a man when a man I mean, is hit with I mean the- Har- Harvey Weinstein did that I get it. Like, but but, but I mean I mean I don't think it's a real I don't think it's a real like defense to the judicial system that we all know is bullshit right that if your bail is reduced that that means innocence okay also makes that's fair that's fair you have the right to feel how you feel no no now, oh, no let me be very clear I'm very objective here I'm not your I'm not your PR agent and I'm also not the prosecutor I'm here just okay. saying reducing your bail doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're innocent, but also mm-hmm. until you're proven guilty by a court of law and 12 jurors doesn't mean that you're guilty either. So I just want to be very fair. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, what I also make it clear, someone that's hit with those type of allegations that I've experienced or what I went through, the public opinion, because I'm gonna be honest with you, everybody only knows me from my music, but my biggest accomplishment was Juju from Superfly. In that movie, I was aggressive. I was crazy because I was told to portray a character. I was told to, to portray Tupac from Juice. That's what the director told me to do. So I embodied that character and I executed that role. If the first thing you see of my face is a crazy, jealous, angry dude on a movie, and then the next thing you see is me in jail, of course people are going, oh yeah, he must be in like that in real life, how he is in a movie. That's, that's not fair. My ankle monitor in the in the court system, if you're a threat to society, they will hold if you're on bail, they will hold an ankle monitor on you and keep you in that location so you can't leave. I also want you to take in consideration, Jason, why when I was released, they also removed my ankle monitor and said I am free to go wherever I want. Have you seen that happen anywhere yeah, with I, my I, allegations? I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know anything about ankle monitors. I don't know. I okay. don't study the. Li- okay. I don't study the history of people who have sex allegations. I. I don't know. What I do know is that. What I do know is that you're out on bail. You're still pending charges. You have not been found guilty. There are still people that are saying that you did it. Uh, you're saying that you didn't, and we don't have any details to change public opinion, right? So what we have to do is just wait until this plays itself out. Now, I will say I have been very vocal on the show that the Me Too movement is extremely important for women and for men. In fact, I say there should be a Men Too movement. But at the same time, I also don't want to invalidate claims that people do bring against people because of the the lack of guardrails on the movement protecting innocent people. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I agree with you about about first of all, I'm very happy you said that because it takes a certain type of person to say things that will make people feel uncomfortable. I agree with you. There needs to for the Me Too movement for real victims. They deserve to be heard. I will. I will scream that to death, whether I'm faced with those allegations or not. But if it's you, if the Me Too movement is used to weaponize because someone is mad, whether you're male or female, does not matter. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's that's all I'm stating. And also for innocent people, male or female, that's falsely accused of things. The thing that this, that hurts that hurts my heart, if innocence is shown, it just goes away. And the people that lie on the person has no responsibility. Everything just goes quiet. There needs to be accountability taken for when people lie on people and ruin people's lives. But do it's you? But do you, I, I agree with you? But in those cases, in this case, or in these cases, these fifteen cases. Do you have evidence that you believe is going to exonerate you from all the charges? My innocence will be shown once trial is over. And so when your trial is over, do you plan on pursuing any charges against these people making the allegations against Kaylani for what she said about you publicly? Once these things, once trial is taken care of, I'll, I will move I'll make decisions based off once trial is taken care of. I'll make my those decisions on my personally on behalf of me and my family. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I, I do oh I do also want to put it out there. These allegations has caused me and the people I love and my family to be threatened. There's been people that's been my my old my 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 email, my address of where I'm living, where I live, have been posted on the internet. People are trying to kill my my family, people I love threatening to hang, people are calling me, people, so, I'm sorry, so, people are calling me a nigger, 
saying I should rot in hell. All black, all black people deserve to burn and die. All black men deserve to burn and die. It's like it's giving people the ammo to say the worst things about me and my family. Like I'm not human too, and I don't have people that love me. Saying you gonna hang me, calling me all these type of names, and I haven't even been to trial to show my innocence yet. That's not fair. People have threatened to kill me. Say if they see me in the street, they're gonna kill me and take my life away and hang me, hang my, hang my lady, hang my auntie, brother, whoever I'm affiliated with. They're gonna hang them all and kill them all and shoot them all before I even get this chance to show my innocence. That's why another reason I'm so disappointed because people are saying what they want to say, but literally my life is at stake. If I die, if I die tomorrow. But some some would have- say you're saying whatever you want to say, and maybe their piece is that is is being jeopardized. I mean, you you did come on the show and shared with the world that Kaylani had an abortion. She's not shared that. People are going to feel some type of way about that. People are going to feel people are going to feel some type of way about you coming on here and you know saying that all these women that have made these allegations are liars. They're going to take their position on that. And then, I mean, I won't lie. You know, Kayla, I, I do. I have met you a couple of times. And I, I do privately. I, I think you're a cool guy. I mean, I have no I have not, had no bad experience with you, but I do recall the conversation where you told me about you and Halle Berry. And today you said that that conversation never happened. So for me, I walk away from this interview feeling like you were not telling the truth with that. And I understand it's a big thing to talk about publicly uh, to say you had a relationship, a sexual relationship with Halle Berry or whatever. But I'm, you know, there's there's a lot more around that conversation that took place that you and I had specifically about that. And so for me to not get the truth out of you here on that makes me go, mm, OK, I do want to wait to see what happens in the court. But I will not be one of the people that publicly say you did this to all these women, because I, I believe that when charges are leveled against somebody, they have a right to a trial that is set up and due process that is fair. And I am not a fan of cancel culture. I'm not one to go out here and say, hey, this person is a bad person and needs to go to prison for stuff that I don't know to be fact. That Mm -hmm. said, I also Mm -hmm. would implore you to know that like, when you say and do things, especially conversations you have with me, it's in the public record for me, because, you know, I mean, that's just what it is. So I don't know. That's. Look, I understand. I understand how you feel. It's a it's a very touchy subject and I get it and I understand. But like I said, once my trial is done, the truth will come to light. And after the truth comes to light, we are I am more than welcome to have another interview with you guys. I have nothing but respect for you. I want to thank you personally for being unbiased because unless you're in my position right now, no one knows how it feels to be called these things when I haven't even had my chance for due process in court. That's not fair. Um, to Kaylani, a direct message to you. I am open to have a conversation still, even though you bashed me and said some of the most horrific things on your social media in front of 12 million people. I'm getting death threats because of you. I'm getting racist people in my DMs because of you of a, off of a situation you had nothing to do with, but I still forgive you for that. And I'm open to have a conversation if you want to. I'm not here to bash you, Kaylani. I respect well, what, you. As a what person. conversation could you have with Kaylani after she says that she supports these women who, who said that you raped them? I mean, what could you say? That, what, that, what conversation that, could you have? That's after sitting in jail for a long time, innocent, it teaches you a lot about patience and hearing people out. And of course, in the public, she's not going to talk to me. But she's if she wants to call me privately and talk, she can do that. Are, are you crazy? Person. If somebody said that I raped them or that or, or that I raped people and then you want to have a private conversation with me while I'm on trial for rape. No, no see, no, no, no. This is the thing. This is the thing. People want I'm going to be honest with you. People wanted me to get on here and go at her, call her names, all this stuff, look aggressive and, and defend and just and just bash her. I'm not going to do that. Well, I don't I don't I'm think not, that that was the, I don't think that would be a smart thing to do either. But I don't believe that if somebody is publicly supporting these allegations that you say are not real, why would you have a private conversation with them? I'm not even going to have a private conversation with somebody that says they don't like my outfit. Why are you going to talk to somebody who's publicly supporting people that you say you didn't rape? Because I know the real her and she knows the real me. She's done things online. She has hated me, then loved me publicly, then hated me publicly all in the same setting. So I'm not about to say fucker, forget her to the. I'm not about to do none of that. If you pay attention, this whole interview, 
I didn't talk shit on her. I spoke facts of what took place. I didn't call her a name out of her name. I'm not going to do that. Of course, no, nope, everybody wants me to do that. They want that drama and that's fine, but I'm not going to disrespect that woman, even though she disrespected me and put my life at danger. I'm still going to have understanding. And if she wants to have a conversation, whether you think I'm crazy or not, I will have that with her. And if she apologizes to me because she knows what she did was wrong and what she knows our personal relationship or anything like that, not for her, I would not do this for her. But for me, I will forgive her because if I don't forgive her, I'm going to be bitter and mad that this woman just bashed me in front of 12 million people. Jason, I, I need you to understand being bashed in front of 12 million people with something. Brother, that's I, brother I, I've been bashed in front of people. They bash me all the time. I don't care about that. Let me ask you a question. Why yeah. is it now today on this show that you want to have or you're open to have this peaceful conversation with Kehlani, yet you guys were just literally attacking each other for the whole world to watch on Instagram? Because if you pay attention, I, I don't. I don't want you to misconstrue. She got into my business. No, I'm not. I'm not saying where the origin is. I'm not pointing fingers at you or her. I'm just saying, y'all just had this public fight, and then now there's a a public plea to have a private moment. Like we, it, we, it, to me, the bipolarism of it all is just yeah. too toxic for me to digest. Understand? Understood. She put this to the public. She did this. So if you're gonna address this pup. If you want to have a conversation with me, shoot me a DM, what's your number, let's talk. We could have handled it that way. She didn't want to do that. She wanted to put get her followers and get the media involved and contact media companies to say negative things about me and contact- But, but do, you think, do you think she would have a conversation with you though after you just publicly said she had an abortion with your baby? No one, Kehlani, yes. But publicly she would be like, hell no, I would never and blah, blah. No, I know her though. There, there's been times she's publicly hated on me and then called me the next day on FaceTime asking me to come over to her house. Okay. She's very up and down, but nobody gets that unless you know her from being in the business. Well, Everybody I mean, is Kaylani, to all fairness, she has been open about her her challenges with mental health and her healing and all of that. Yo, first of all, everybody has challenges with mental health. That's a very important topic. I have challenges with mental every so I'm not gonna ever make her feel bad for being that person, but I will say. Some of the actions she's done recently, that's not fair to me. Cause her my this entire situation had nothing to do with her. I'm only acknowledging publicly, Jason, because she inserted herself in my business. Okay, that's so all. let me ask you this. Let's go back to your business. You you yes. said your you said your public message to Kaylani. What is your public message to the 15 women who say that you raped them? I'm disappointed that these things are being said about me. To the people who said these things about me, I'm hurt because I know the truth. And I'm never going to attack y'all. Y'all have the right to speak how y'all feel or say what y'all want. But the, my innocence will be shown in court, in trial. And once that's said and done, we can acknowledge everything else after. Mm. And so what is your message to the millions of people online that have seen the information out there and just, you know, tag on to sound bites and now think that you are this this guy whose name belongs uh, with uh, Bill Cosby and, uh, you know, Weinstein. Okay, that's understandable. I can't control, one thing I learned, especially sitting in jail, is that I cannot control how anybody else feels. Unfortunately, there is a audience of people in the world that looks at news stations or blogs and automatically believe whatever they see. It is very easy to believe things that are shown on platforms with millions of followers so I'm not going to say, believe me or not believe me. But what I will say is, don't threaten my life. Give me an opportunity to show my innocence. In this, in this generation, it's supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. But because of how everything blow up out of proportion, it's I'm already guilty until I prove I'm innocent. That's not fair. So just keep my family out of it. However you feel about me, send that to me. But keep threatening my family out of it and at least have enough respect on behalf of me and all the millions of people sitting in jail right now who who has not been a trial yet. Let me have my trial first and then say what you want. Just I can't I want to tell you to hold your opinion because you either like me or hate me. It's one of those. But I'm not I, I, I can't I can't control if everybody cheers for me or not. I can't I can't control that. But what I will ask is just respectfully, I care about my life. So please just wait. The trial is over before you make your assumptions about me. 
That's all I'm asking, respectfully. So you mentioned a couple of times in the interview that you, you have a girlfriend. How do you explain to her what's happening in your world and how is this impacting her and your relationship? Um, I keep her out of it. I keep her out of it because it, it hurts me a lot when I'm seeing these allegations about me and her caring about me. Nobody, nobody is aware of this, but they just, they just started out bashing her. The whole time I was locked up in jail, she was there for me the entire way, picking up my phone, talking to me every day, making sure I had some food when I had no money, when nobody was picking up the phone. My loyalty will forever be with that woman, whether people like her, dislike her, cause she's next to me. Everybody in jail, or not everybody, but there's people in jail with loved ones that stick through them, through thick and thin, and there are some loved ones and people who fall off. When I got to jail, a lot of people fell off. A lot of people. She stuck by me. But I, so what I will say, if this is a situation that has to do with me, I'm the man, attack me if you feel a way about me. But leave my lady, especially at a situation where it's supposed to empower women and make women feel good, stop attacking that woman. If you hate me or love me, I will suggest you attack me. Don't attack the person I love. Don't do that. That's not fair. I'm I'm in the middle of this. So focus on me. Leave my family out of it. And just give me my due process till trial and then make your decisions. That's all I'm asking. After being in jail for three years and still pending charges for things that you say you didn't do, are you angry at anybody? And if so, who? No. I was when I first got to jail. Um, it's, it's very strange. I can't be about to say this, but it's true. I'm mad that I was put in jail because I know I'm innocent, but also sitting in jail, it showed me the people who really were and weren't for me. The moment I stopped benefiting people financially, they disappeared. Imagine sitting in the cell, a dark cell, calling and they forwarding your calls on purpose. Nobody's coming to see you at visit. Nobody's doing this. Everybody left me. Everybody left me except for that woman. That's why I will forever be loyal to her. Am I angry? No. I feel like God had God makes things happen for a reason. I, I, I literally feel like I'm on this planet Earth to put out a message. It makes no sense right now. It looks chaotic. The world hates me right now. And I understand that. That's fine. But I don't hate nobody. I forgive everybody. Anybody who abandoned me when I was locked up, I forgive you. Anybody that talked shit on my name when I was locked up, I forgive you. I don't want to hold no malice because that's going to ruin my focus and how I feel and what I'm trying to do with my life and my future. I still want to have kids. I want to have a family and all that stuff. I got to get through this big hurdle I'm going through right now, but I don't want to hold on hate towards nobody. So everybody that did me dirty or or, or abandoned me, I forgive you. Well, who, I don't hate who, you. Who let, who, let, who let you down the most? Everybody left my side. Everybody left my side. When you get to jail, things get tricky. But it showed me who my real friends are. And it, and it narrowed the hundreds, hundreds of people I knew to a very, very small number. I can't even count on five, five fingers. But I'm also grateful for that because I know who to give my loyalty and time to. And that's what I'm doing now. So the people that I, that I felt a way about, I'm not going to put their names on there because they're not worthy, worthy for me to even mention them. But they know who, how they did me. They know who they are. And just know early, I forgive you. And I'm not holding that hate moving forward. Mm. I, I got I to gotta stay mentally focused and stay calm. I'm not driving myself crazy. I'm not on drugs. I'm going to face whatever I'm in head on. And I'm going to fight for my innocence because I know I'm an innocent man. So I know you're facing I, what I heard, 100 years in prison. Um, how do you... 100, 150 years to life. So you're facing 150 years to life in prison. How does one facing that kind of consequence uh move through in a world of me too and if you could change something about the me too movement what would it be first of all when it comes to the me too movement i would not change anything because that's not my place that is a platform for women to express what they've been through and the trauma and the pain they endured with real victims what i don't approve of and what i don't feel is fair is if somebody male or female uses it to weaponize and like okay you didn't give me what I want, or you didn't do this, or you don't like me no more, or you're not talking to me no more. And then saying, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to ruin this person's life and say that this person took advantage of me. Now you're weaponizing the Me Too movement. That's not, that's what I don't agree with. And that's not fair. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I don't agree with. For the real victims, 
I understand you have a platform to express yourself. I will not change nothing about the movement except for the people who lie and weaponizes it because they know that the movement will come and support them immediately. It is so damaging and so crazy to the point where someone can say something nowadays and all you need is hearsay to lock somebody up and ruin their lives forever. That's what I don't agree with and that's not fair. All right, so um, a lot of people are going to have a lot to say about this conversation. I'm going to leave you with the last word. What is it that you would like people to walk away from this um, interview taking from you? Um, when I was released, I came out with a plastic bag, no clip, no nothing, 20, 27 or $24 in my pocket, and a woman I love. The world is attacking me. The world is calling me names. But what I, what I will say to anybody out there whether you love me or hate me, I'm going to defend myself. I'm going to show my innocence. And I have no hate towards anybody that spoke negative on my name. I'm not holding that to you guys. I'm focusing on showing my innocence so I can have my freedom, so I can have the family and career that I want and want to give to my family. Um, I'm dropping the EP soon. New music, kind of addressing a few more things, but I'll leave that for the EP. It's coming out very soon. Stay tuned. But once this is all said and done, I just hope I can move forward with my life. And I know whether whether it's shown I'm guilty or innocent, even though I know I'm innocent, my life will forever be affected by this. But I'm going to prove to people when your innocence is shown, nobody can determine your future, your fate or your career except for you. That's why I don't I don't I'm not silent. That's why I'm not backing down or running. I'm facing my stuff head on because I know I'm innocent. And I will also let anybody know out there that when this is all said and done, love you all, forgive y'all, but I'm going to continue my life after this and I'm continuing my life now. But just give me a fair chance to get to trial and everything will come to light then. Well, I think it's fair to say people are going to want to see how this uh, plays out in court. I don't, I, don't, I don't personally, I don't know who's advising you, but I, I don't think playing it out in an album is smart. Understood. Understood. I mean, that's just my, I'm just, I mean, I think the people are going to want to see you know, less social media, less music and more like what's happening in court. But, you know, again, it's, it's your story. This is the beginning because you're still in it, you know, and uh, I'll definitely be following it. Hollywood Unlock will stay on it. And when it's done, you know, I mm -hmm. think, you know, if, if you are acquitted, I think it'd be a dynamic conversation to really, you know, peel back the the layers of the the whole experience. And, you know, and if and if you're found guilty, then I mean that that is just I mean it'll just be what it is. But um, I, I I definitely will give you the invitation now to come back and talk about it. Definitely, I want to tell you thank you, thank you, Jay. Um, how you carried this interview very professional, very unbiased. Thank you for giving me a platform to explain myself. It's very hard to explain things when I don't have a platform to speak on. So thank you for just hearing my story out and letting me get what I need off my chest. Um, as an artist, I know you how you said people don't really care to hear music. That's my creative outlet. If I'm not acting on screen, I'm making music. I have the right to be creative. So if I wanna be creative and explain myself or explain certain details through music, I have that right. Some people act, some people podcast, some people interview. You're expressing your art. I have the right to express mine, how I feel in my safe place. And that's with my music. I'm also not facing 150 years to life in prison. Exactly. But exactly. but I appreciate the compliments about the interview and look you know I, my my stake in the game is just trying to find the truth right just trying to find the truth there's people out here paying attention to your story um, like yeah. they were paying attention to your career when you first started and uh, I somewhere I just somewhere in the middle of it all want to get to what really happened and I guess you know we'll have to wait until court happens and again thank you for coming on and sharing what you were able to share and no we'll be we'll be watching. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all for having me. Y'all have a wonderful day. And I'm telling you this, it's on the record right now. I have, since you guys are the first platform to do this for me and give me a platform, once this is all over and I show my innocence, I would love to come, come back here and talk to you guys and give you guys the exclusive and have another conversation after this is all said and done. And that's on record. So I can't say a lot about that. Well, I'll be right here to hold you accountable to it. So all right, I believe you. I believe you. You we'll get, be, we'll you get be, down. I know. We'll be watching. Thanks. Thank you. All right, look, that was a great show, and make sure you keep coming back because we got all types of amazing interviews and topics that are gonna make you go crazy. Uh huh. That's right. That means like, subscribe, do everything you need to do to make sure you stay up to date with what we got going on. And ladies, stay tuned in because you know I have your back. 
And listen, make sure that you're commenting below because even though I say I don't read it on the show, that's all I do when it's over. Peace.